It's quite a sight seen from the interstate in the small town of Sigurd in central Utah, a 600 plus acre solar farm generating 80 megawatts of power back onto the grid. It's just the latest to go operational here in our state. We're the 11th in the nation for solar production as the federal government creates incentives to develop alternative energy. It's tonight's 360 report, a look at solar farms and small towns, a bright future. It's gonna happen in Utah, whether we like it or not. It's a good use for property that's not being used for any other use right now. At first, our county commissioner said no, and then we went back and rethought that and says, okay, we will participate with you financially. In this 360 report, we take a closer look at solar farms popping up in Utah's small towns. One of the state's newest facilities to go online is located just off of I-70 in Sevier County. But you may be surprised to learn it's just the latest in about two dozen similar projects, all operational within just the past five years, with many more in the works. They said, well, can you help us locate ground that's a single owner, six to 800 acres? And I said, well, there's this one spot. Just west of the town of Sigurd, out of the way, but right next to a major substation. The issue for a solar generating plant or almost any power plant for that matter. It's just access to the grid. Malcolm Nash is Sevier County's economic development director. The sun is obviously everywhere, but being able to tap into a line can be a real challenge. Why this site was so ideal for developers, but was it a good deal for the local community? It's like any project. It has its pros. It has its cons. Uh, for us, uh, the pros outweighed the cons, so we went ahead and participated. Along with the federal government offering incentives, but in turn, Sevier County was able to get something back. The county were able to get some money, some revenues, to help build student housing on the campus of Snow College. That's one reason why we like the project here is because it opened that revenue stream. To Sevier County's testament, they did a very good job of of leveraging that investment to the long-term benefit of the community. Stuart Clayson is Regional Growth Director with the Utah Association of Counties, advising many local leaders negotiating with developers on how to best utilize the influx of capital coming into areas that could really use it. They want to capture as much of that new tax revenue locally. With projects in Emory, Carbon, Beaver, Millard, Juab, Tooele, Salt Lake, Davis, Box Elder, Rich, Iron and Washington counties, either now operational or in the works. We need to have our eyes wide open and understand what these investments mean. Millions spent on each project, usually by a large corporation. In this case, D.E. Shaw, a New York City-based hedge fund, invested the money in panels, poles, and other infrastructure that's all considered personal property by the state. It increases the value of the land and thus the tax base for the county, but that value depreciates faster than other large structures or businesses. Still, Clayson argues. Investment is good. As long as the right kind of deals can be arranged ahead of time that financially benefit the rural areas beyond the initial frenzy of construction. Our role is how do we take these investments and turn them into long-term positive impacts in the community? And on their own, they won't. But done in a greater context, they will. Iron County has known for a long time that we have a great solar resource here. Blazing the trail here in Utah with the first utility scale solar farm in the state, going online with its more than 340,000 photovoltaic panels back in 2015. The Utah Red Hills project, it's about 500 acres west of Parowan. It opened the floodgates for other solar development in the county. Economic Development Director for Cedar City and Iron County, Danny Stewart, says their high altitude, cooler temperatures, available sunshine and affordable land make this region a prime location for this type of technology. To date, we have 13 projects that are in, in operation. So that equals 17 power plants of, of various sizes. That's 6,000 acres of solar panels in Iron County, and with three new projects to be built by the first of next year, they're expecting over 1,000 megawatts going into the Rocky Mountain power grid. All of the projects that are currently in production in Utah are the photovoltaic power. They're absorbing sunshine that's already coming down. We don't have any of the reflective power projects. I know that there's been concern and fear about those and bird migration and different things, but th this is a really safe, really clean energy. But as far as providing jobs to these rural areas, it just doesn't deliver. Rural uh, economic development's interesting. We, we want jobs. We really need jobs in the rural areas of the state. And when we started looking at solar, we started you know, to evaluate these aren't huge job creators. They are for 12 to 18 months. I mean, it's a, 
flurry of activity during the construction, but after that, it's it's very minimal. On a number of levels, it makes sense. It helps with the com country's energy transition. You know, I have to say at the same time, Utah's largest coal mine is in Sevier County. 30 miles up Salina Canyon and just about a 40 minute drive from the solar farm, Sufco is one of the longest continuously running and most productive underground long wall mines in the nation and an economic engine and major employer in this area. Something Nash says this project won't change. This one doesn't look like it'll you know, be a threat. These are going across the country. We just as well participate in, the, in that process as well. Adding fossil fuels are something that won't go away and can't go away, needed even here in harvesting the sun's energy. These solar farms rely on fossil fuels to operate. And the general public often does not understand that, that one important point is it takes power to make power. Believing the low profile project, both literally and figuratively, felt like the responsible thing to do but shouldn't cause any major change. It's just another feature on the landscape, if you will. You know, you, you'll drive by it and take a look at it and say, oh, that's kind of neat. Now he says the lifespan of these panels, about 25 to 30 years, with provisions in place for the developer to clean up that site and put the land back to its original condition if they do move on. As for the next challenge, the men I spoke with this week say it's storage. Once advancements can be made to that battery technology and energy storage, then the future could be even brighter for solar farming here in Utah.